Okay, so let's now talk about our time-based fuel strategy we're gonna be finding in systems such as an AEM Series 1, Series 2, or the Honda ECU. So we're gonna be finding that in the older OBD1, OBD0 Honda ECUs, even the newer OBD2 with K-Pro or Flash Pro, we're gonna be finding that they're all gonna be time-based fuel strategies. So the Series 1, Series 2 don't actually have a fuel injector flow rate that we program. The values in the table are gonna take up the difference in our injector size. The values in the table are gonna be based on our injector millisecond. So we have our dead times that we have to program for a series one or series two that have to be ballpark correct, but we don't have to actually program the flow rate. So for example, if we have a really large injector, we're gonna be scaling down the raw values in the table to much lower values. If we have a very small injector, like a 200cc injector, the values would be increased because that's gonna give us a higher injector pulse width. So it's a pretty simple system. Now in an AM Series 1, Series 2, if we program the wrong injector data, what we're gonna be finding if we look at a three-dimensional look of our table is that the values at idle are gonna have a big hump at idle and the uh, light throttle driving. We're gonna be increasing those values to uh, give us the appropriate fuel to absorb that lack of the dead time in the table. So at idle and part throttle driving, we're gonna have a much lower injector pulse width compared to a higher throttle angle and a higher load. So therefore, the values in our injector dead time table are gonna have more of an effect on those areas of operation because we're gonna have a lower pulse width and a little change in pulse width is gonna be a big change in fuel delivery in this time-based model. So we're gonna see that we have to skew up the table. Now likewise, if we have too high of a dead time value, we're gonna be finding that we have to really decrease the area at idle and light throttle and part throttle drive, and we have to really pull down the table and it's gonna have a non-linear shape or look to it. So it's gonna be a dead giveaway if we see that our table looks something like this, where the idle is really increased and the part throttle is really increased and it doesn't really linearly flow with the rest of the table if we look at the three-dimensional view. And likewise, if we have the dead time values too high and we have everything turned down a ton, it doesn't flow again with that three-dimensional look of the table, it's gonna be a dead giveaway that we don't have our injector data right. So if we don't know the flow rate, and we're just going to simply scale out that in the table in the series one, series two, no big deal, but the dead time will matter and we're gonna be able to pinpoint and look at a table right off the bat and know if the dead time values are gonna be appropriate. So don't be afraid to go back in and tweak your dead time values in your table so that your actual three-dimensional look of your table in this kind of system looks more appropriate, and looks more linear and flowing so that it makes a lot more sense.